Hello and welcome to my Adriana tutorial video. This is a tutorial on my pattern for my Adriana doll, which is this cute little cat or a cute little elf. You can find this pattern on my Etsy uh, that is linked below. And I'm just gonna show you how to put it together. First, you're gonna cut out all your pattern pieces. And I like to trace the pieces onto my fabric. Um, this pattern is made specifically for felt, but you could use other types of fabric. Um, but I like to trace the pattern pieces onto the felt and then cut it out. You could also just pin the pattern pieces to the felt and cut it that way. Cut around the uh, pattern piece. Um, but my quick hack is to just trace it onto the pattern and if I have to do more than one piece, I just layer it. Um, with felt though, I wouldn't cut more than two at a time because then your cuts get sloppy. Anyway, um, so this is the main body piece and head, which is one pattern piece, and you want to cut out a, the little uh, dart that is here at the top. Ideally with some nice sharp scissors so you can get some clean cuts. And you should end up with two body pieces, front and back, uh, four pieces uh, for the arms and legs front and back, and then four pieces for the legs front and back, two front, two back. And then if you're making a little elf, you should have one piece of fabric for each ear, or if you're making a cat, you should have two pieces of fabric for each ear, and then two pieces, front, one front, one back for the tail. Or you can mix it up and give your elf a tail. Why not? To what makes you happy. <laughs> uh, for the ears, you're, if you're making an elf, you want to fold the top corner of the ear down to the bottom corner. And I like to just kind of pin those. That way I can like see what it's gonna look like. But there you go. That should be all of your pattern pieces. And then I like to start with the main body. With felt, you usually have a slightly softer side, so I like to make that be my right side. And so you're gonna uh, fold right sides together and you're gonna do just a quick stitch along that dart. I like to do a whip stitch uh, for this part specifically on this little dart, but for the rest of the doll, you can do either a whip stitch or um, a blanket stitch, whichever is your preference. And I like to use just uh, whatever embroidery floss that I can find. There is this cheaper one that I think is meant more, really more for like little bracelets or this nicer, uh, glossier uh, embroidery floss, but whatever you decide you like. <laughs> So you do a quick little a stitch up along the dart, trim off the extra thread, and then I fold, kind of fold it out on itself, kind of push, um, and then I like to kind of just push out that seam, that, and then you put your uh, two pieces together. So you should have the front and back with that dart done. And then I will uh, pin the body together, and before I start sewing along the whole body, I like to kind of place the ears where I want them. So you can kind of tuck it in if you want a shorter ear, or kind of pull it out to the edge if you want a longer ear, and then decide on just the angle that you want your little ears. So this is kind of customizable. You can have them pointed down if you want more of a house elf look. I kind of like them out straight horizontally, or you can point them up if you want them. It looks a little pointier when they go up, but I like them like this, just horizontal straight out. So I pin those uh, on the inside, kind of place them where I want, make sure they line up, pin them, and then that way they are there when I stitch around. And then on the top of the head, you want to make sure everything lines up, so I like to pin right where that dart stitch is. Okay, so I like to start my stitch about here right before the neck starts and then go all the way up around the head, pause before I get to the other side of the neck to kind of stuff the head, and then I will continue down the whole body and leave about an inch uh, to fill in the rest of the body. And then close it up. So let's go ahead and do that real quick. 
If you ended up making the cat for the ears portion, you just uh, stitch along the points of the ears. Uh, it's because you have your two pieces, you will stitch, uh, whip stitch them together. Uh, you don't add any stuffing unless you want squishy ears. I don't add stuffing to the ears. Um, but then you will just uh, pin them in place and stitch them just like you did the elf ears. So right about here, when you get to the ear, it might be a little bit tricky. I like to just continue the whip stitch and you pretty much just go right through the ear. So you'll kind of come out the front like you would normally and then... I will go in right, we'll go right through the ear, like straight through the ear, um, but you want to go in right next to the edge of your top piece of fabric, right top the uh, body piece, right there on the edge, and then so straight through the ear, come out the other side, and then you keep your stitch parallel, go in through the back like you normally would, don't get tangled up like I did. <laughs> I mean, just take your time with it and you'll uh, slowly get there. Put it up. In through the back, out like you normally would, and then just go straight through the ear, being parallel to the edge of your uh, top body piece and back body piece. Just like so. And you will just kind of continue that through the whole ear and that will anchor the ear in place so you don't have to worry about it coming out. And then you just continue on um, throughout the, the rest of the doll with the same stitch. If you are doing a blanket stitch on the uh, whole body, I would, for the ears, I would switch to a whip stitch. That way you can uh, anchor those in place. I don't think a blanket stitch would work. Okay, but see here, I have paused right before I've kind of started on that curve where the neck starts. So I'm gonna take this pin out and I'm just gonna stuff the head before I continue on. And your stuffing is kind of up to your preference. I don't like them too tight. Also, depending on your stitch, if you overstuff it, your stitches will start to gape. Um, so you want to be kind of mindful of um, how much stuffing you're putting in there. All right, now the head is fluffy and squishy as we desire it to be. So we're going to continue down the neck with that same whip, whip stitch. Just kind of picking up where we left off. And we've left about a one inch hole, maybe a little bigger, depending on how comfortable you are. The smaller the hole that you leave, the uh, harder it is going to be to get that stuffing in there and just kind of like maneuver it where you want to be. It is helpful to grab like a pencil or a pen. Sometimes I use a chopstick uh, to get that stuffing in there. Like here I am trying to uh, kind of push it up into that neck area. Um, It'd be easier to uh, fill the neck up first and then finish the rest of the body. Okay, and then you just stitch that closed. Let's 
testing for optimal squish. And then I like to kind of go back in where my last stitch was, come in, be, come out in between the two pieces of fabric, um, pull a little tight, and then I will tie a knot as close to the stitches as I can. Usually a double knot for good measure. And then I will just kind of feed the thread back in uh, between the uh, two pieces of fabric where I pulled it out. And you can just kind of come out somewhere in the body, pull it taut, and then cut with some scissors. And that little thread will disappear and you don't have to see uh, where the finishing knot was. And this is me scampering off to find scissors. There we go. <laughs> and snip. Kind of like cutting an umbilical cord, huh? Ew. <laughs> there we go. We have the head and body done. Ears are in place. Looking pretty cute so far. And now we can move on to the limbs. So you're pretty much going to do the same thing with the limbs. I like to start above the... Um, just somewhere below where that first... Where one of the curves, one of the ends is. So I go up along the curve down all the way to the other side and then you just kind of come around until you have about an inch uh, maybe a little bit less uh, to stuff the uh, whole arm or leg there's my my wonderful assistant trying to be oh so helpful Look at him. So very helpful. All right, so we've stitched all the way around. We've left a little hole, about an inch, maybe three quarters of an inch. And so I will, I recommend stuffing uh, each end of the limb first. That will be easiest. Uh, you might want to use a pen or pencil, just just kind of help it guide it in there. And then once you have each end stuffed, you stuff the middle and you just kind of smoosh it in as you seal it up. So here you can see that I kind of have a little bit of gaping in my stitch. So you don't want to push it in too hard or too much. I think if you do a blanket stitch, it is less noticeable and less likely. It's a little more, a uh, blanket stitch is going to be a little more secure than if you do a whip stitch. But whip stitch is faster and easier, so you gotta like weigh your pros and cons. <laughs> also, if you don't have stuffing, uh, something else that I like to do just to uh, conserve materials and so that there's less waste, the uh, extra felt that you have, you can cut it up into tiny pieces and use that as stuffing. Um, Make the most of your uh, materials. Less waste is better. Just gonna smoosh, smoosh, and then seal it up. And so here, I you can see I have those uh, gaping little holes in the uh, side of the arm. So I'm just kind of working the as I seal it up. <clears throat> I'm working the thread uh, across to where those little holes are and just kind of adding extra stitches. Um, this might be a little tricky to do if you are a novice and not used to, uh, you know, tinkering with your stitches. That's why I would recommend just kind of taking it very slow, making sure all of your stitches are nice and tight. Not too tight because you don't want it uh, kind of warping your felt or your fabric, um, but just take it slow and steady and, and be um, attentive to all your stitches. Okay, so I'm going to show you guys how I attach the limbs, and I'm going to show you two different ways. Um, first one is we're going to attach the legs. Uh, 
just attach them. And then for the arms, we're actually going to do a button joint. Um, so you're going to need a nice long piece of thread and preferably a longer needle. And I like to go in through the back first, uh, right beside our seam. And I use a stitch uh, to just kind of keep me parallel as I go right through the body out to the other side of the seam. So we're going to go all the way across. We're going to leave maybe five, three inches of thread on that other side. Um, we don't want that to pull through. So however, uh, however much you're comfortable with leaving out there. Um, okay. So we're going to pay attention to what is the front and back of the leg. And so we're going to go on that back side. You don't want to go through the leg. Uh, we're just going to go parallel on the inner side of the leg and kind of pick a stitch and then come out um, parallel to that stitch on the front but still on the inner portion of the leg if that makes sense um, and then that uh, we're gonna go back in the body on the front side now on but we want to stay parallel to where we exited on that back side. So that's where it comes in handy, kind of lining up with a stitch. So we're going to all the way through to the other side, parallel to where we first went in. So those two sides line up. And now we're going to do the same thing, but we're going through the front, still on the inner side of the leg, out parallel like so and then I'm getting kind of twisted up here but you know just kind of pay attention to where your thread is uh, so you don't get tangled up and so now we're gonna go back in that very first place we entered right next to um, that extra thread that we left you don't have to pull everything super tight right away. We're gonna go back in and back out the exact same place as before. And for me, it helps to just kind of come out where I was, where we came out. But we are gonna go back through the leg in the exact same place again. Okay, right here I'm just kind of untangling and that extra thread that we left kind of pushing that to the side and it pull it tight a little bit there we go not too tight but so that it's where we wanted okay all right so we came out on the back side where we did before now we're going to go through the leg again on that inner side just like we did that first time. I'm gonna go through. Sorry that I am off camera. Coming through that leg and then we're gonna go through the front side of the body just like before. Essentially you want to go through each leg twice. So we're coming back out what we did earlier. Pull it tight. Good, and then we're gonna go through the leg just like before. So we come out on that back side of the leg, still on the inside. Good. Um, sorry, most of that was off camera, but now we're gonna just pull our strings, both our strings tight, make sure our, our legs are about where we want them to be. Not too tight because then you're going to kind of deform the body, it will squish the body, um, but tight enough. So pull those tight and then you're just going to tie a knot and you want to pull that down as close and as in between the leg and body as you can so it's kind of tucked in there. Pull that in tight and pull tie a uh, second knot. Put that in snug and hidden between the leg and body and we'll snip off the excess and that's it uh, so that's uh, one way to attach the limbs if you don't want uh, 
it to move. Uh, I didn't do it too tight, so I can kind of move the legs, um, but they uh, won't hold that pose. With a button joint, you can hold the pose. Uh, so we'll do the button joint on the arms. You just kind of want to figure out where you want them placed. And so we're going to go straight across like before. I start on the back side. So essentially we're doing the exact same thing as the legs, but we're adding buttons. So I like to pick a stitch to kind of line myself up, come out parallel on the other side, on the back side of the body. We're going to leave some thread. I'm going to leave a little less than last time because I'm comfortable with that. Okay, and then so we're gonna grab our arm, and this time we are gonna go all the way through. So on the back side of the arm, all the way through, and then we're gonna drop our little button in there. So we're gonna feed it through, arm and button, pull that through. And so now we're gonna go back in parallel to where we came out. And we also want to go in the parallel hole on the button that we came out. So uh, just make sure it all lines up really nice. So we're going to go parallel, line up our button, and make sure the hole we're going back in is the parallel hole. Okay. So we're going to go through. I'm being finicky. <laughs> There we go. So just pull that tight. Pull that to the body. Beautiful. And so then like before, now we're going to go in the front side of the body, parallel to that where we came out on the back side. This is why a oh, having a long needle helps. There are special needles for this. You get doll needles. Um, so we're going to go in and out, keeping everything parallel. Yep, same thing as last time. So go through the arm on the front, drop our button on, pull that all through, and then Make sure we're going to go back in parallel to where we came out. Line up our button so that we're also going in in the parallel hole. It's, how, that's, it's a lot easier if it's just a two button, <laughs> two hole button, <laughs> but I have uh, four hole buttons. Okay. And then we're going to go back in on the back side off camera. Cause that's that's what we do. That's how we roll. God damn. <laughs> uh, so just like we did with the bottom legs, except now it's gonna be a little trickier because we're gonna go in through the body and come back out where we did on the other side. But we're also going through the arm and through that same buttonhole as we did the first time. So just take your time with it and just kind of have to feel around for it. Um, Pause to untangle threads if need be, or pull some tight if need be. Okay. Just some minor adjusting as we go. <laughs> So we came out that's that buttonhole and then we're going to go back in the parallel buttonhole through the arm, through the neck, try to keep it all in that same spot as before as you went through the first time. Here you can see me kind of struggling to line up and then I prick my finger because I'm smart. Ow. <laughs> So just take your time with it, be careful. So we're gonna come back out that same buttonhole as before on the front side, pull it all through. And then we're gonna go back in through that parallel buttonhole, through the arm, and we're gonna come out in between the arm and the body. We don't wanna go through the body again, like so. 
just barely caught that on camera. <sighs> I'm so sorry. I will get better, I promise. <laughs> Alright, so pull that all the way out. And you can uh, tug on your strings to kind of tighten it to how you want. And then just like before, I like to pull the uh, strings towards the back. And then I will tie my two knots, trim off the extra, and then we're all set. Just a quick simple little knot, make sure it is uh, tight and snug and hidden in there between the arm and the leg. Sorry, the arm, <laughs> the arm and the body. <laughs> me struggling because I had that one string too short. <laughs> Trim off the extra. And there we go. All done. So from here you are free to customize your little doll however you please. Um, I like to make little dresses or outfits for them. You can uh, stitch on a face, cut some felt pieces and make a face. You could also embroider a face on. Um, I would do if you're gonna do any embroidery like for the face I would do that first before stitching the um, body pieces together uh, and then you can do things like maybe cut felt or some yarn for the hair just do as you please um, you can uh, see some examples I'll have some more examples of like what things I've made with this doll um, pattern uh, you can use other fabric. Um, you could use a mis if you want to use other fabrics. I would suggest using a machine to stitch the pieces and adding a seam allowance so that you can turn them inside out. Um, that's a little trickier and a little more advanced. Um, but yeah, I, I mostly would recommend using this pattern for felt dolls and then just have fun doing whatever you want for the face. Like here, I am making a cute little face with pins because I can. Um, so yeah, so this is my Adriana pattern. So you can make a cute little elf or a cute little cat. And I would love to see what you guys uh, make with this pattern. Uh, let me know if you bought it. It is available in on my Etsy page. You can find that below. Um, and you can tag me on Instagram or on Twitter or even on TikTok and show me uh, what you guys have made with your with the pattern. I would love, 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 love to see uh, what you guys uh, do with it. And thank you so much for watching. I hope this was helpful and that it helped you put together your own doll. If you do have questions, uh, feel free to leave them down below and I will do my best to respond. And that's it from me. Thanks, guys.